This is Jackie and I'm here day three Bonnaroo with Luthi and we're trying to keep cool out in the sun, doing our best so far. I'm just I'm, giving in, <laughs> giving in to it. You just might as well sweat. Like I always laugh when people are like, it's hot. Yeah, that's It's an outdoor sweat. festival. We're here well, to, you know, shed a couple LBs. Yeah. That's it. Walk around, drink a little, eat a little, whatever Absolutely. other things a little bit and like yeah. it's all good. Go for a run here yeah. in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I'm kidding. Every time I do see someone doing that at Bonnaroo, though, I am pretty much mind blown. Like, really. You didn't get enough mileage in today. You know? Or anytime I see someone wearing all black. Yeah. I mean, and there are a lot. Mad I rocks. don't quite get it. Well, you guys are from Nashville. Yes. Very great city to catch music. How do you stand out in a city that's kind of almost overly saturated with music? There are so many bands that are based, and there's so many great live venues as well. We try to uh, just be weird and be ourselves, and if people like that, they, they tend to gravitate towards it. So like we that. all gravitated towards each other, and, and now hopefully we're gravitating towards our fan base as well. Yeah, I think we just stopped thinking about that so much, and then that's what ultimately separated us. Because we've all been parts of projects where we did think about being part of the fold, and then we kind of just were like, why don't we just do exactly what we want to do? So. Far more fun that way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's definitely more fun. Yeah. So what are some of your favorite live music venues in Nashville to either play or attend a show in? Man, um, I love the original basement. That was the first show we ever played like full band at like a million years ago. Um, basement East has been really good to us. All the guys at, at Grimey's, I don't know. I mean, you yeah. say a couple. We just there's... played our first uh, headlining show at Exit Inn. That was great too. Exit is Nashville's cool. full of so many great venues, that, and we've played pretty much all of them, whether they were full or empty rooms. So. Yeah. You can stumble upon like a tiny little dive bar, and there's a great band playing on a Tuesday. That's what right. I think I love about Nashville is that you can really go anywhere and find a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, best place for hot chicken. I need some recommendations. Help. Damn. Uh, Prince's. Prince's yeah. is like OG. Uh, we yeah. live down the street from Bolton, so that's my go-to. All right, Patty B's is like the the big one. Like I don't know, everyone goes there if they I'm come. I'm gonna in. give you a little secret. Don't go to Hattie B's. Yeah. Go to one of the OGs. Yeah, go to one of the originals. All right, that's sure. important. Prince's is outlandishly right. hot, though, so be prepared. <laughs> Ooh, okay, like, good to know because I'm kind yeah, of a wuss. It's okay. insane. I like white girl spicy. Yeah. Like. Just, well, just a little bit of a kick, not can't function my maybe, face. Any, maybe, yeah, uh, I don't know, either one, be careful, that's all. Yeah. Bring a, gla a cold glass of milk with you. Yes, that is the secret. <laughs> that is, people don't understand, that's a great oh, secret. Yes. Talk about music now, your uh, debut album, Stranger, is out now. Um, new, mu new fans are a great place here at Bonnaroo to get uh, new fans. What is, um, describe, the stran describe Stranger in three words or less. Boogie Circus. Yeah. That's good. That's our mantra. <laughs> I like that. It's, that's under three. Yeah. Uh, what's the one song new fans should hear to get a, a sense of your overall vibe? I mean, the title track it has a little piece of everything. I, I, I guess I've been saying that you know too much as a phrase, but it, it kind of does. But uh, Milk and Honey has been very well received yeah. on the radio, yeah, so I don't know either of those. But there's more. I mean, the side A and side B, they do differ greatly. I have to say that. So it's like we kind of have to listen to it as a whole, you know? I mean, that's what albums were for. I mean, yeah. not not singles. Um, what is your songwriting process like? Does it start with a, a riff, a beat, a lyric, or does it depend on? Everything is different. I mean, some of the songs started as like just a strict melody like idea. Like the first track on the record, this Home Again song was. I just started singing something in a parking garage, and then we started to build on that. Um, but some of them are more of a community effort. I mean, it. I can't say that it's any one way or the other. Yeah, there's no method to our madness, that's for sure. And how do you guys translate your recorded album to your live stage performance? Do you purposely change it up? Do you purposely stay the same or somewhere in the middle? I think we start um, kind of sounding like the record, and the farther we get into a, a run or the, the longer we play the songs, the more weird or long <laughs> or uh, funkier or chiller they get. Yeah. Do you guys prefer the outdoor festivals or the more intimate club gigs? I feel like we're an outdoor band, but lately it's been so hot outside between Jackson and this that I'm just like, ah, club could be all right. <laughs> Wouldn't mind a little air conditioning yeah, exactly. break. No, I think outdoor. We really love in the festivals uh, a lot. Yeah, it's been cool. The, the, well, the inside gigs give us a chance to kind of play some of the more intimate. I wouldn't even say they're ballads, but by our standards, they are. So some slower we, tracks. Yeah. yeah, we usually we usually hit everybody as hard and as fast as we can at the outdoor stuff. Mm -hmm. And what about music streaming sites like Spotify and you know, Apple Music and things like that? What role do you see them having? Is it something that you focus your attention towards or something that's kind of along the way? 
I think it's been really cool. We work with the uh, team at, at Ditto Music. Um, give them a small plug. And it, just the, the information you can gather from there to know the demographics of the folks that are listening has been really cool. Um, that's, that's definitely a benefit. Obviously, the finances are a little bit weird, and it's, it's definitely different than it used to be um, from a standpoint of selling physical records, but I'm not going to beat a dead horse because everyone talks about that all the time. So Hopefully, they'll cool figure things, a way. Yeah, right. one of the cool things is definitely the, the breakdown and figuring out where your listeners are. Yeah. You know? Up yeah. Coming bands like us have no choice but to let people listen to our music, and we wouldn't want it any other way. As long as people are listening to music, we'd give it away for free if we had to at, at a show or whatever, just so people are sharing it and listening to it. Yeah. What's up next for you guys after Bonnaroo? Uh, we are headed to New Orleans, yeah. starting a little run this next week, and then we're going up to Electric Forest in Michigan, which we're very excited about. Maybe it'll be a little bit cooler there. I, I can't promise you, though. I, <laughs> we'll I talked to who I talked to the guy in New Orleans that was up in uh, Indianapolis on a different radio station, and he was like, yeah, don't count on it. <laughs> it's like, I was just up in India. I'm like, dude, yeah, you're right. There's so. a chance. <laughs> we'll hope for it. Stay tuned for much more from Luthi. This is Jackie. Thanks to Chorus FM and In the Key of Change.